Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly webinar series. We are discussing a very important point with respect to powers of NCLT and CLAT with respect to contempt. And this is something that uh, I believe is uh, very usable, especially where ins insolvency professionals uh, face difficulty in uh, NCLT orders or in CLAT orders not being followed by various government authorities, promoters, etc., etc. Uh, over to Anil, sir. Thank you, Ankit, and uh, thank you all the participants for joining. 110th episode of AAA weekly webinar series. Today, the subject is powers of NCLT and NCLAT regarding contempt of court proceedings. The subject is important because very, very recently, we have actually received an order, a remarkable order from NCLT Hyderabad. And in that order, for the first time in the history of IBC, two custom officials, they were in prison. The, the proceedings, in fact, the order was announced for their imprisonment for one month. Two custom officers, they were ordered for imprisonment for one month only for the contempt of court. So that triggered the subject. And this, therefore, we thought of analyzing the entire provisions. And the provisions are, in fact, very, very uh, controversial. There are different uh, orders from NCLT. But finally, the NCLAT has said that, yes, there is a power of contempt of court proceedings with NCLT and NCLAT. Now, looking into this entire subject, we would first of all understand what is the court of what is a court of contempt. Like the contempt of court is defined under section two, subsection A, the Contempt of Court Act, nineteen seventy one. So there are two types of contempt. One is a civil contempt and the criminal contempt. So the civil contempt and the criminal contempt are also defined in same section 2, subclause B and C of the Contempt of Court Act. When we reach out to section 12, subsection 4 of the Contempt of Court Act, it talks about the contempt by a company and the persons associated with the company. So therefore, the contempt can be against an individual, the contempt can be against an organization, the contempt can be against the directors of an organization, the contempt can be against the officials of the organization. So one, the section 12 of section 4 says, the definition says that the, where the person found guilty of the contempt of court in respect of any undertaking, given to a court is a company, then every person who at the time of the contempt was committed, was in charge of and was responsible to the company for the conduct of the business, as well as the company shall be deemed to be the guilty of the contempt and the punishment may be enforced with the leave of the court by the detention in civil prison of each such person. By the detention in civil prison of each such person, and the following section, section 12, subsection 5 of the contempt of court says, talks about the contempt against the directors for their involvement in such fraudulent act shall also be held liable for punishment for contempt. So as we say the company, then this particular section 12, subsection 5 talks about the punishment to the directors in case or manager or any official or secretary in case they deemed guilty and in case they are having the uh, consent or connivance, so they would also be held guilty of a contempt of court and they can also be detained in civil pri uh, uh, prison. So when these definitions are seen, we also have seen the entire IBC and we could not find IBC is not carrying any clause regarding the jurisdiction of NCLT or NCLAT regarding the contempt of court. In fact, the 
uh, uh, NCLT was uh, set up by way of Section 408 of the Companies Act and Section where well, NCL 80 was set up and established and constituted by way of Section 410 of the Companies Act 2013. So when these two tribunals, when these adjudicating authority and the appellate authority was basically a creation of Companies Act, it was a creation of Companies Act. Then we also have to see Section 425 of the Companies Act, which says it actually grants a power to NCLT and NCL80, the same jurisdiction, the same powers and the authority as the High Court in dealing with the contempt themselves. So the NCLT and NCLT is not supposed to go to any court. They have powers within the, their own authority under Section 425 of the Companies Act 2013 that they actually can proceed. They can start contempt of court proceedings. Now let us understand what exactly Section 425 of the Companies Act says. It says power to punish for contempt. The tribunal and the appellate tribunal shall have the same jurisdiction, powers and authority in respect of contempt of themselves as the High Court. Contempt by themselves as the High Court has and may exercise for this purpose the powers under the provisions of the Contempt of Court Act 1971, which shall have the effect subject to modification that a reference therein to a High Court shall be construed as including a reference to the Tribunal and the Appellate Tribunal. So, like when we are seeing the Section 425 of the Companies Act also kind of says that it will also be considered that the reference of High Court <clears throat> will be construed as including NCLT and NCLAT. Then the reference to the Advocate General in Section 15 of the said Act shall be construed as the reference to such law officer as the central government may specify in this behalf. When we see the 11th schedule of the IBC amended the Companies Act 2013 to align it with the IBC. Notably, while amendments extended certain provisions like Section 429 to NCLT for IBC, no similar amendments were made to Section 425. Because see, when we see 11th mm -hmm. Schedule, where most of the laws of the Companies Act are supposed to be aligned with the IBC and respective amendments were also notified along with the notification of IBC. However, unlike Section 429, no such alignment was recorded, modified in Section 425 by way of this 11th schedule. So this is a gap and this gap finally has been filled by way of judicial pronouncements. So initially, when there were three things. One, IBC was not having any kind of contempt of court sections or proceedings. Section 425 was not aligned with IBC as per Schedule 11. So therefore, it was only Section 5, Subsection 1 of the IBC, which was saying that the adjudicating authority under this IBC would be NCLT as constituted under 408 of the Companies Act. Then, now let us try to understand if a particular court, maybe NCLT or NCL80, in case the court does not have any power to initiate contempt of court proceedings, to put in prison or to impose penalty to any person who is, who is contravening the orders of the court and that too intentionally and then, in, then the particular court will have no teeth and the orders of the court, orders of the tribunal, orders of the appellate tribunal will have no meaning and would not be implemented as to the spirits of the orders. Now, the NCLT and <clears throat> NCLT has very vital role for CIRP and for liquidating. So therefore, 
the adjudicating authority must possess powers to initiate contempt proceedings. That is what a general, normal, legal person can also think that a court orders, if not complied with, and if there is no possibility of contravention, no possibility of contempt of court, then that court would actually be considered as without teeth, and those orders of this court would not be complied with, and that would never be the intention of any law, that would never be the intention of any legislature, even if there are gaps, even if the alignment of Section 425 is not made in the 11th schedule, but initially, initially, the courts were taking the uh, powers from Rule 11 of NCLT rules and also NCLAT rules. And what exactly Rule 11 says? Rule 11 says, Nothing in these rules shall be deemed to limit or otherwise affect the inherent power of the appellate tribunal to make such orders or give such directions as may be necessary for meeting the end of justice or to prevent abuse of process of the appellate tribunal. Initially, in some of the orders, Rule 11 was used by the courts to pass any order regarding contempt of court proceedings. Now, in case we see the, uh, we are reading section 425 and section 408 of the uh, Companies Act 425 is for the uh, contempt of court proceedings, 408 is for the constitution of NCLT. Then it is evident that NCLT's contempt authority is exercisable in IBC proceedings that actually the tribunal was conveniently saying that since 425 and 408 both are there, so therefore there is no separate powers which are required for IBC proceedings. Now it is also very true that the contempt has to be there. And without this contempt, I think the uh, bench would be toothless. So in way back, the Supreme Court has held in 2014 in the case of Subramaniam Swami versus Arun Shori. It was a contempt petition. And what was held in this particular case? A very, very important brief paragraph I would be reading. The court under the Contempt Act means the authority which has the legal power to give a judgment, which if confirmed to some other authority would be definitive. The court is an institution that has the power to regulate legal rights by the delivery of definitive judgments and to enforce its orders by legal sanctions and if its procedure is judicial in character in such matters as the taking of the evidence and the administration of the oath, then it is a court. So basically this particular judgment was on a kind of inquiry commission. So it was held in this particular judgment, Subramaniam Swami versus Arun Shauri, that a inquiry commission cannot be a court. So particularly the inquiry commission was not having a power to give a judgment, also which can be confirmed by another authority. That was also not the uh, process. Uh, the court is an institution which has the power to regulate legal rights delivery of judgment, enforce the judgments, enforce the orders, and also to impose legal sanctions. But an inquiry commission was not having this. Therefore, the contempt of court is restricted to court. It is restricted to that particular court where the power orders are being passed, orders are being enforced, judgments are being passed, and those are definitive judgments. And all the parties are supposed to comply with those judgments. However, it was compared with the inquiry commission and finally this came. So this is also kind of a basis. What kind of court should have the contempt of court powers? So given this ratio, NCLT and NCLAT in basically inherently has all these powers. Powers of hearing, powers of uh, judgment, powers of enforcing the judgment, and then there is an NCLAT and finally the Supreme Court to confirm the uh, judgments. So there are legal rights and these are all legal rights to uh, uh, impose sanctions. 
So all this is also available with NCLT and NCLT 80. Therefore, in case we interpret the law, then the powers of contempt of court must be there with NCLT and NCLT. <clears throat> Since we do not see any specific provision in IBC that should not be interpreted as the court does not have power. So in case we interpret that way, that means this particular tribunal will be ineffective, ineffective especially in cases of uh, dealing with the contempt proceedings. So one, that there is no conflict between IBC and Companies Act, but the Companies Act Section 425 should have been aligned with IBC as per Schedule 11, but somehow that was not done. Now, when we see the principle of effectiveness, that, of course, is applicable to NCLT and NCL-80. What is principle of effectiveness? <clears throat> no, it introduces uh, the its statutory interpretation, emphasizing the importance of ensuring that statutes are effective and operative in achieving their intended purpose. Now, the intended purpose of NCLT, intended purpose of NCL-80 is all known. The purpose is to pass judgments, pass orders, make it effective, make it enforceable, impose sanctions, and in case anyone is not complying with the orders, then of course, the principle of effectiveness would not be there. So therefore, to, to bring the principle of effectiveness, the uh, it was basically held by the Supreme Court in the case of Tinsukhya Electric Supply Company Limited versus Assam and others. And that was judgment long back in 1989, 13th April 1989. It was the Supreme Court which held that the principle of effectiveness, stating that the statutory provisions should be contrived to make them effective and operative. When we see the objectives, of the IBC. It is the objectives of the IBC. In fact, it was rewritten in the IBC Amendment Bill 2019. And what was rewritten and that, and it was in fact addendum to the effectiveness and the objectives. That effectiveness was said as in some cases, extensive litigation is causing undue delays, which may hamper the value maximization. There is a need to ensure that all creditors are treated fairly without unduly without unduly burdening the adjudicating authority whose role is to ensure that the resolution plan complies with the provisions of the code. Now, adjudicating authority has to assure, ensure that all the law are being complied with. Therefore, to reduce the undue delays of all kinds intending those caused due to non-compliance of the orders or meets across the code. So what is required? that to avoid delays to for maximize value maximization for resolving the uh, stressed asset in a time uh, timely manner what is required that the all kind of non compliances of the orders that should be stopped because that particular is available all across everywhere it is kind of non compliance of the orders can be seen now while we are talking about the contempt, we also can think about what is the difference between a tribunal and a court. So when we see this, the, what is the difference between the tribunal and the court, we could find, we could find a very old judgment of Durga Shankar Mehata versus Raghu Raj Singh. Very old, like 1954 judgment of from Honorable Supreme Court. And it says the tribunal, the expression tribunal is used in Article 136 of the Constitution of India. Does not mean the same thing as court, but includes within its ambit all adjudicating bodies, provided they are constituted by the state and invested with the judicial powers as distinguished from administrative or executive functions. So when we apply this judgment of Durga Shankar Mahasa versus Raghu Raj Singh, we can also see that the NCLT as a tribunal 
NCLT as a appellate tribunal does have does have the something which is similar to a court. Why? Because see the these are constituted by the state as defined by the Supreme Court. They have the powers which is judicial powers and it is distinguished distinguished from administrative or executive functions. So therefore these tribunals are not really the court but it is similar to the court and it does it, these are permitted under article 136 of the constitution of india and when we see the administration law the administrative law observed the following test to be applied to determine the legal status of a tribunal one that the every tribunal is constituted by an act of parliament and not by the executive so therefore the nclt and ncl 80 was constituted by act of the parliament by inserting section 408 and 410 of the Companies Act. Next, the decisions of the tribunal are judicial and not administrative. In other words, the tribunals apply law to findings of the fact and decide legal questions objectively, not on the basis of executive policy. So the tribunals are working judicially. They are not administrative. They are not, not working based on the policy. They are working on the law. And they are interpreting the law and they are finding, see, the law is in which side. So therefore, accordingly, the judicial orders are being passed. So therefore, NCLT and NCLT is also passing the second test to get a definition of tribunal, which is akin to a court. Third test, the tribunal not only deals with the cases in which government is a party, but also between private parties. Similarly, the NCLT and NCL80 deals with the cases where the both the parties can be non-government or one side party can be government and one side it can be a private party. So therefore, the third test is also yes in the case of tribunals and then the tribunals are independent. When we say tribunals are independent, in other words, they are not subject to administrative interferences in the matter of adjudication. They are not to be dictated by the administration as to how and in what manner they should decide. So there is no administrative interference on NCLT or NCL80. So this test is also passed. Next is the status of the tribunal. Status of a tribunal is recognized by the constitution as an adjudicating, as an adjudicatory body vested with judicial power of the state under a statute or statutory rules. NCLT constituted under the Companies Act. IBC made it adjudicating authority. IBC made the NCLAT as appellate authority. So therefore, it is recognized by the constitution. And it is recognized by the constitution as adjudicating authority and as an appellate authority. So therefore, the and the final is the power to adjudicate is derived from the statute, but they are not courts. Yes, they are not courts, but the power is derived from the adjudicate by the by statute. <clears throat> See another another old case which uh, we could search from the uh, uh, from the uh, public domain is the Pandu Rang Dattaraya Khandekar versus Bar Council of Maharashtra. This is as old as. 1984 judgment and the apex court observed that findings of the tribunal based on no evidence or mere conjectures and surmises can be set aside by high courts or supreme courts so like what we are saying is the tribunals the tribunals must act according to the six tests that we have seen one the, it is constituted by parliament two the decision is judicial not arbitrary uh, administrative three the tribunals deal with the cases of private parties as well and the tribunals are independent tribunals are independent so now, now when we see this uh, uh, commissioner of income tax appeals then in that case uh, the commissioner of income tax appeal is either either they have an appellate function but that is an administrative function because one side is always government so that is something which is uh, the uh, uh, which is a administrative decision whereas the income tax tribunal where the income tax department also comes as a party they also argue 
<clears throat> that may be again that may be again a tribunal which is kind of uh, fitting into this test then coming to the judicial review over tribunal's decision can be on the following ground that is something which is not that we are attending so finally <clears throat> we also have seen that the contempt of court act 1971 does not define the term court but the court under that act means the authority which has the legal power to give judgment which if confirmed by some authority would be definitive and the court has the power to regulate legal rights by the delivery of definitive judgments and to enforce its order by legal sanctions and if its procedure is judicial in character in such matters as the uh, taking of evidence and the administration oath then it is a court it is also mentioned in that particular uh, at this uh, uh, the judicial the tribunal the tribunal as an adjudicatory body having judicial powers and clothed with the powers of the court has powers to give a decision that is binding and authoritative if confirmed by some authority it would be definitive and can no doubt fall securely within the definition of the court now <clears throat> the under the when we talk about now clearly about nclt and nclat we have seen different various petitions are being filed and those petitions are actually being filed in the history of last 6 years 7 years one that we have seen the contempt of court proceedings or various applications are filed for similar proceeding one under section 425 read with uh, section 10 and 12 of contempt of court act and rule 11 and 34 of nclt and nclt 80 rules so this is the first kind of application that we could locate that has been filed by the uh, person uh, like kind of complaining about contempt of court then we have also seen that some of the similar proceedings are filed under section 60 sub section 5 of the ibc read with rule 11 of nclt rules we also could see some of the applications which are filed by the uh, persons suffering from any kind of contempt under section 151 of the code of civil procedures read with rule 11 and 149 of nclt rules now the these are these are the kind of applications that we could see uh, on on the public domain that the uh, suffering party complaining party has actually filed and taken the uh, uh, taken the umbrella of these sections and uh, rules now the when we see the powers whenever there is a contempt <clears throat> there is a, there are uh, powers which actually uh, can be considered as powers of the tribunal in case of contempt of court one they can freeze assets of the company and this is section 425 doesn't say this but yes this kind of powers of the uh, court can be considered power to freeze the assets of the company power to investigate or initiate investigating proceedings power to seek the assistance of chief metropolitan magistrate power to punish for contempt proceedings so therefore even the punishment also will mean in imprisonment the punishment also can be mean uh, the imprisonment now the the issue whether the authorities under the ibc have the right to punish for contempt has not yet actually gone to supreme court we are presently at enclad and no case has been decided by honorable supreme court on the powers of the tribunal for contempt of court proceedings under ibc cases it is very clear that the powers are available for any contempt of court for any contempt of court proceedings under the companies act but under the ibc since there is no act and there are controversial judgments and opinions coming so therefore there is no such judgment which has gone to supreme court 
the uh, what the general parlance, the general understanding is that the NCLT operates as a quasi-judicial body under the Companies Act and with the authority over the corporate disputes and insolvency matters. So despite lacking explicit provisions in IBC regarding its statutory or authority to initiate contempt proceedings, NCLT possesses powers akin to a civil court. That is what is the general acceptance because in case we don't accept this, then how to implement the orders of NCLT and NCLAT. Now the resemblance to the civil court also potentially empowers NCLT and NCLAT to commence contempt proceedings given that contempt of court of a civil offense. NCLT and NCLT may punish for contempt where they are expressly empowered to do so, do so under section 425. And now the inherent powers which are given under rule 11 of NCT rules and uh, NCLT rules that also actually have been used widely for various powers which a normal tribunal should have or a normal tribunal should have to, uh, uh, to do justice uh, for the cases that they have handled. Now, there are judgments that we have seen. And we before we go to the judgments, Ankit, we would like to see in case there are questions at this level. And then we will actually come to the judgments that we have studied Although I said there is no judgment of any, but then there are controversial judgments. So uh, in case we have some questions, Ankit, we can talk about those questions. So the first question that I have is from Mr. Hari Prasad. He says that the FC has not obeyed the NCLT's order. Should the contempt of court be preferred against the FC as an organization or against the authorized representative of the FC? So the person representing the FC or the FC? If the FC is a corporation or a company, I I believe I think it should be yes. the company, right? It should be the organization, because yeah. the structure in especially the Indian financial creditors that anyone who comes to the meeting uh, will finally get approval from the approving authority and then will take a decision. So therefore, the uh, the guilty is not the person who is coming to the meeting the guilty would be the person who is finally taking the decision and that is the organization, organization structure. Then, uh, Mr. Gulshan, he says whether the passport of a director can be impounded if he fails to appear before, appear even after non-bailable warrant. Usually, usually NCLT maintains that they do not have power to issue directions to, imp to impound the passport. So there is I a process have, which yes. is in civil yeah. I have also seen that this impounding uh, passport, we actually have to prove that person is actually trying to sell the properties, that person is trying to flee away from India. In case there are some evidences that this is likely to happen, then only the NCLT can take cognizance and can say the impounding of the passport. But actually the carrying a passport of a person is a constitutional right and it cannot mm. be restricted for small things even if even if when i say that the in the bankruptcy processes in the bankruptcy process also there is a restriction on foreign traveling but i believe that a application can be made even during bankruptcy that yes there is a need to go out so that would be permitted because this is a constitutional right of any citizen of india but then uh, what I'm trying to the question is more about whether NCLT has this right to, you know, impound the passport or order for impounding of passport or rather reporting to the maybe immigration authorities that this passport should uh, uh, not be allowed to travel. So Ankit, we found some of the judgments where even the, and the, when the, even this insolvency has not even commenced and some of the facts are brought to the knowledge of the NCLT that this person is trying to sell assets or this person is trying to take out money from the bank account mm -hmm. and that actually will be misappropriated. So partial moratorium, in fact, has seen, we have seen that the partial moratorium has actually been started in some of the cases where the court actually gets 
proper evidence and the uh, evidence that there is a there is a fraudulent intent and that intent has to be stopped so we have seen some of the orders but that will be based on very very clear evidences that yes there is an intention and then those kind of orders can be passed so that we have seen partial moratorium has been initiated in some cases in case a clear application is made with evidences then we have a question from uh, uh... so your voice is freeze duncan maybe i can read uh, the uh, i would i would be reading this uh, uh, i would be reading the first question that i can read is the can you please mention the case title of the hyderabad bench order for imprisonment yes i would be coming to that then whether nclt is a quasi judicial body i would say yes then there is another question uh, from rk girdar is the assistant commissioner of income tax not obeying the nclt order for refund of the amount unauthorizedly adjusted during the moratorium i would say yes it is a case fit for uh, applying for the contempt of court proceedings and then we have uh, a question from our own uh, uh, employee a civil of cd is not rectified even after the implementation of plan duly passed by the nclt is it covered under the contempt of nclt order no it is not covered under nclt order why because there is no specific order in a uh, to sibil there is no specific direction to sibil for doing something it is a kind of uh, understanding of the order it, uh, it these are the various provisions of the ibc which somehow will uh, be will be presented before the sibil and then they will uh, say reflecting or not not reflecting then they will only say uh, uh, am i audible like anyone can uh, anyone can just send me a question am i audible because since i i'm not having ankit presently with me in case i am not audible somebody can send a text any, anyone can send a text in case i am not audible yes so i am <clears throat> audible thank you very much uh, i have got this uh, that i am audible so now i i can go to the uh, can execution application be also filed with nclt post receipt of pufe application yes when we attended when we actually had our webinar on uh, on pufe uh, applications so there is an, again an order from i believe again from hyderabad I, nclt where the execution also would be handled by the nclt only so that that kind of powers are also there but the execution is different from uh, the contempt proceedings then there is an anonymous attendee says the how the home buyers and amravati builder cases delhi up south india project filed in honorable lc after nclt judgment so the question is not clear but in the case of uh, uh, amarpali judgment what because see, since we were the rp in two or three companies of amarpali so we understand that the supreme court uh, took over the insolvency resolution of amarpali group and then it actually has gone to um, then the supreme court is presently handling uh, that particular um, uh, case yes ankit i have uh, because see you see because of the technical mm -hmm. difficulty, I believe yeah. you are not there so i have uh, gone a uh, little but and i think you can see if there is any other judgment which can be immediately attended so question uh, so i think because i joined now the questions have disappeared from my screen but anyways what uh, what i think can be done is uh, you can continue and i will request in case those participants who have a question can repost them uh, i also feel that no i think there's some other difficulty can you make me co-host i think then i will be able to see see them there's some difficulty there 
yes so you are okay let me do that you can just make me co-host maybe yes, that I've will solve that. the problem yeah. i've done that. i've done that. yeah now i can see the questions yes, yes. so uh the, the another question from rishabh chandra ji is that is it feasible to file contempt against suspended directors for non-compliance of avoidance application order when suspended directors are saying they don't have any money to pay no, that is not a <clears throat> contempt of court. That's an execution uh, proceedings. You can file execution proceedings. Then the court might even tell you that <clears throat> you provide us the uh, list of inventory of assets of this uh, promoter. Then the court will pass an order for attachment of those assets. And then the court will even empower you uh, to, to sell those assets after taking the control and custody. The court can also pass an order under Regulation 30 to the local authorities for handing over the possession uh, to you and in even in section 429 of the companies act there is a power to, with this tribunal that they can direct the uh, uh, cjm they can direct cmm they can direct the dc or dm to assist the any any third party in execution of some kind of process so those mm. powers so it is only like somebody has to apply maybe under regulation 30 of cirp or uh, section 429 of the in, uh, in the Companies Act. So these are the uh, various powers that we can actually invoke and then uh, the tribunal can uh, give us such orders. So basically if somebody makes an argument and that he says, okay, let's say the court says you have to pay and that person says that no, I can't pay. So will like uh, 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 he, he there is execution is the only next process. Contempt you feel will not help. No, no, it's not a contempt. Because his, he says that I want to pay. I don't have. Because the contempt has to be like disobedi disobedience and that too willfully. But this can be extended to other cases also. Today somebody says I impose cost and you have to pay 10 lakh rupees because you were not diligent. Now that person can say I don't have 10 lakhs. So then again the execution execution proceedings. And then like, uh, like it's basically... Somebody said that I don't have 10 lakhs of rupees and then like he, he loses his rights in that particular case. That is also mm -hmm. there. All right. Then uh, if any compliance of direction by NCLAT or order uh, is pending with NCLT, can NCLAT accept contempt application for non-compliance? So this is so from... The, if the contempt is uh, uh, from the NCLT orders, then it is the NCLT. If the contempt is on the orders of NCLAT, then the contempt of court proceedings will be filed before NCLAT. It is not the appellate authority. It is the same court which actually can start the contempt of proceedings. The contempt means that the court has given a direction or passed an order which remains not complied with. So that same court can actually start the contempt of court proceedings. Now here, I believe the I, the question is slightly different. They say that there is a direction by NC, NCLAT which is not executed or not uh, implemented because some pendency at NCLT because the matters might be linked or you know some sub uh, uh, some some detailing might be required to be decided by NCLT. I think this is what they are. Uh, no, I don't think I don't think there is any possibility of starting any contempt proceedings against the NCLT. NCLT is mm -hmm. working as per their best capability and best time availability. So and even if there is an issue which is decided by NCLAT, where the where a connected issue is already so pending with NCLT, let's say for that example, NCLAT says, pendency, pendency NCLAT says, pendency. yeah, so that pendency cannot be a contempt, yeah. Yes. yes. So, um, um, so I think Rajiv Bhatnagarji has made a comment where then we have whether PF department can pursue action against suspended directors post initiation of CARP. I think we have discussed this before that, you know, the action against suspended directors continues with respect to their actions prior to the CRP. Yes. Uh, that is not something that changes. Then Mr. Maheshwari, Lalit Maheshwari is asking that if non billable warrant is issued by NCLT and defaulted, it does not produce bail bond to police. In that case, police has to arrest that person and will be produced before NCLT. Can NCLT send him to jail for non-compliance of order of NCLT? That's what mm -hmm. has happened in Hyderabad. That's what is have said, yeah, that is what has happened. Then, uh, what sort of action PF department can take against directors? Uh, that's a different subject, I believe. 
in yes. case income tax authorities do not comply with the orders of the nclt in application filed by rp during crp if there is a non compliance from income tax authorities i don't see a, a reason why you cannot file a contempt against them yes uh, we but have yes, filed, come... but nclt is going slow on that particular uh, application yeah. so nclt will always be slow on on you know contempt applications against the government or government officials because one there is some protection also they would want their replied before they take any action Uh, non-compliance of direction by NCLT to CD to hand over the record of RP under Section 19.2 can be treated as contempt. Very much, very yeah, it's like a good case for a contempt in case they are not following the orders. Are there any recent Supreme Court judgments on contempt under IBC? Uh, we don't know of any. No, no, when and we, we have we have searched. Uh, we have started. We started. And no it will be great in case any if in case any participant has anything, then they can always share. We will be we will be happy to share it with everyone. So we have a what sort of uh, this was already taken care Very of. Case, Who yes. can file the application for contempt after completion of CRP? First file resolution professional, COC, or corporate debtor. Uh, sorry, I couldn't understand the question. Who can file the contempt application after the CRP is over? Whether it has to be the resolution professional, COC, or the CD. So the whenever there is an order passed, uh, there is a beneficiary always. and the beneficiary definitely has the powers to file an application for contempt of court orders against a person and that but that beneficiary uh, in case the beneficiary is not presently working on that particular position then we have to see that the benefit goes to whom now in case the rp has taken an order and that particular benefit goes to creditor and finally the rp also Uh, uh like uh, relinquishes his office as rp then of course the beneficiary will file the contempt of court proceedings because if that particular proceeds will go to uh, creditors the creditors will file that uh, contempt of court then uh, this is an interesting question and i think this clarification is important from mr narayan gupta he says that if appeal has been filed against the order of nclt or nclat can pending while the hearing is pending for that for that application or for the stay application can contempt proceedings be initiated by nclt or nclat respectively so we have seen that where such matter is pending in appeal filing a contempt would always kind of attract uh, you know rather the court would say that you know this is frivolous litigation because the matter is already pending with a uh, with a higher by a higher court Yes. so that's not something that is recommended uh, neither so the is it order likely has to not achieved finality finality uh, so yes. while that is there you the one uh, acting against that order or acting in in stay you know in furtherance of that order so all those things of course uh, uh, have a direct connection yes. then um, um, so i think um, that that may the case name of the hyderabad case may be repeated that's another request that i will see so we have not said yet just like it is a very very recent yeah. case it was uh, uh, it was passed on 9th of may 2024 and the name of the case is sanjay gupta the liquidator of lanco baband private limited versus tarun kumar panda and others sanjay gupta this is a case which we fought sanjay gupta is the founder partner of triple a insolvency and this is a landmark judgment where the first there was an order from nclt regarding the release of the imported material which was lying at the uh, paradeep port under the control and custody of custom officials because the custom duty was not paid thereafter based on the various supreme court judgments that this custom duty is not payable because of uh, Uh, the section 53 uh, so therefore the invoice has already been raised by the um, by the exporter in the name of the corporate debtor the ownership has been transferred to the uh, to the corporate debtor the payment has been made or not is rel- is not relevant because if the payment has not been made then the even the supplier will file their claim but once the invoice is uh, uh, issued once the delivery is given to the port once the delivery has reached india that means that immediately after paying the custom duty that material would actually become the in the control and custody of the company 
or the importer. So this is a Supreme Court judgment, like in case the, uh, the sum of the goods have been imported, it has been delivered to the port, the material has arrived, that means all every the title has been transferred. The goods are now to be entitled to be taken away by the by the company. There is no condition uh, for taking the goods other than custom. So the custom duty is a tax. It cannot be recovered because of Section 53. So therefore, the courts have passed an order that the goods must be released by the court authorities, by the custom officials to the RP, so that the RP or the liquidator should be able to uh, use this as a liquidation estate or as the resolution uh, part of the resolution process. So this kind of order was passed by the NCLT and the liquidator sent various emails and various uh, efforts were made to uh, take the custody of these goods, but then it was not uh, given. Then the liquidator filed an application <clears throat> and uh, of contempt. And under Section 425 of the Companies Act, read with Section 10 and 12 of the Contempt of Court Act, also read with Rule 11 of NCLT rules, it is against the Deputy Commissioner of the Custom Department and the Traffic Manager of the Customs Department. In the NCLT, the discussions happened. No, in the as far as the citation is concerned, I can say again. Sanjay Gupta, liquidator of Lanko Baband Private Limited, Lanko Baband Power Limited versus Tarun Kumar Panda and others. Now, the uh, what actually discussed in NCLT 1, Section 425 of the Companies Act empowers NCLT and NCL 80, same powers of High Court under the Contempt of Court Act. Then again, the court discussed that Section 469 of the Companies Act grants the central government the powers to make rules to carry out the provisions of the act. Further, subsection 2 specifies that this rule making authority includes matters that are required or may be prescribed by the act. Then it is again discussed that the NCLT rules are established under the authority of section 469 by the official gadget. So what they are trying to say that rule 11 is made under statute. Section 469 empowers to make rules. 425 is actually having the contempt of court. So the, then there are the Section 2A and 2B of the Contempt of Court Act states that the contempt of court means civil contempt or criminal contempt. Now the civil contempt means willful disobedience to any judgment, decree, direction, order, writ, or other process of a court or willful breach of an undertaking given to a court. That is what is defined under Section 2, subsection B of Contempt of Court Act as the civil contempt. Now, then the court discussed in this order. In fact, this is a very good order passed by NCLT Hyderabad. The court further discussed that the non-compliance with this order of this authority is a civil contempt. And the two elements are required, and we have seen these two elements are there. Element number one, disobedience of any judgment, decree, this direction, order, or other process of the court. Direct the, the element number two, disobedience or breach must be willful, deliberate, and intentional. Now, when the court saw the circumstances, the court held that the deputy commissioner and the traffic manager guilty of contempt. Further, it was they were both were sentenced to simple imprisonment of one month and and a further fine. It is not or and a further fine of rupees one thousand. So this was the judgment which I was referring to. Then this particular idea triggered in our mind that we should definitely go ahead and we should actually some discussion would be required. Now the further judgment is from. Shalinder Singh versus Nisha Malpani, Resolution Professional of NIIL Infrastructure Private Limited. This judgment is little old. It is the judgment of 22nd November 2021, and it is from NCLAT. In this judgment, the uh, appeal has been filed challenging the orders of adjudicating authority and the in, in fact, the tribunal dismissed the contempt proceedings on the ground 
that 425 does not extend contempt jurisdiction to IBC. So first there was NCLT order. NCLT said that 425 does not get extended to IBC law. Therefore, the IBC does not have the contempt jurisdiction. So that's why I'm saying I'm saying that there was uh, like kind of controversial. Uh, there there were orders which were uh, kind of uh, uh, unmatching orders. So there is no direct uh, kind of understanding so far. In that case, the NCLT held. In that case, NCLT held that the contempt jurisdiction is an extraordinary power generally reserved for constitutional courts. Further, NCLT acts as an adjudicating authority under IBC and not under the Companies Act, except where explicitly permitted by law, where I said that this alignment of the Section 425 is not done in a Schedule 11 of the uh, IBC. So that is where it is referring to. No amendment have been made to include Section 425 within the scope of IBC. Specific provisions of the Companies Act are applied to IBC matters through amendments, but Section 425 is not one of them. However, the decision of the NCLAT is very important. In 2021, thereafter, NCLT has now become open to contempt proceedings. Now, the decision of the NCLAT was it was held that NCLT and NCLAT have the same jurisdiction, powers, and authority concerning contempt of it as the High Court. Powers of the adjudicating authority, just because Insolvency and Bankruptcy Act does not specifically mention the contempt provision, it cannot be said that NCLT has no power of contempt. If one is given such restricted interpretation, that NCLT has no jurisdiction of contempt, then its order cannot be implemented. And in fact, the IBC will remain in black letters without any tooth to bite. In the This is the considered opinion of Appellate Tribunal. And the, the Section 425 of the company that empowers NCLT to exercise contempt power and NCLT under Section 5, subsection 1 can utilize these powers. Again, Section 408, which is basically the section where this constitution of NCLT was done and 425 imply that NCLT's contempt jurisdiction extends to IBC matter. Again, Section 429 was amended. Section 429 was amended in 2016 and it was amended to allow the tribunal to seek assistance from the chief military politician, chief judicial magistrate or district magistrate collector. So what actually the appellate authority is saying that in case there is a contempt proceeding, then under Section 429, the NCLT can direct the assistance of CMM, CJM, and the district collector so that the uh, imprisonment is effective, so that the imprisonment is implemented. Now, the amendment extends to the tribunal's power to include actions under the IBC it indicates that the legislative intent to support the NCLT's broader jurisdiction, including contempt. Statute should be interpreted purposefully, meaningfully, practically, and rationally. Article 323, capital A, and 323, capital B of the Constitution of India authorize legislatures to establish tribunals and include ancillary provisions. Similarly, Rule 34, sub rule 1, under the caption general procedures of NCLT rules, enjoins that in a situation not provided for in these rules, the tribunal may, for reasons to be recorded in writing, determine the procedure in a particular case in accordance with the principles of natural justice. The tribunal, as per rule 51 of the NCLT rules, has the power, has the power to regulate its procedure by the rules of natural justice and equity to discharge its function under the Act. So therefore, the, and the Section 430 of the Companies Act was also mentioned in the judgment that the NCLT has the exclusive jurisdiction to deal with disputes arising under the Act, thereby meaning that the jurisdiction of the civil court is outside. Contempt powers are, are crucial and enforcing. So finally, the purpose of punishment under the contempt jurisdiction is not only curative, but also corrective. 
and one cannot be permitted to bring disrepute to the majesty and supremacy of law and the image of the temple of justice. This was all mentioned and so this was a very, very powerful uh, judgment. Similarly, in the case of Mahesh Kumar Panwar versus Mega Software Infrastructure Private Limited, that company was in liquidation. This judgment was in June 2019 and this is from NCLAT, uh, NCLAT New Delhi. Again, it was a judgment where the uh, it was allegations whether the adjudicating, uh, despite a direction by the uh, NCLT from time to time, ex directors of the company were willfully disobeying to cooperate. The directors were not cooperating to RP. RP invoked powers under Section 425 of the Companies Act, also read with Section 70 and 72 of the IBC. The contempt proceedings have been initiated by the adjudicating authority of the AC director and which non-bailable warrants have been issued as the directors were not cooperating. So at the stage of liquidation, two applications were filed by the ex-directors. One, recalling the non-bailable warrants issued against the directors and the other application questioning the working of the liquidator. Now, the decision of the NCLAT in this case was that the appellant means the directors have not cooperated with the RP and the liquidator and they are not still cooperating. The adjudicating authority has already initiated contempt proceedings under Section 425 of the Companies Act and intends to order penal action under Section 70 and 72 of the IBC. We allow the appellant to raise all the issues before the appellant authority. So in this particular case, uh, the uh, particular appeal by the uh, suspended directors, it was dismissed by saying that you go back to NCLT and raise all these issues. So, and then we, uh, but then it was not really decisive. The decisive judgment from NCLAT was the judgment which was Shalinder Singh uh, versus Nisha Map Malpani, and that judgment was 22nd of November 21. This is the only decisive judgment from NCLAT, and the other judgment from NCLAT was not decisive. It was even sending it back to adjudicating authority. Another good judgment that we have seen, another good judgment that we have seen from NCLT Hyderabad that was that is in the case of Thigala Venkateshwar Rao IRP versus Pasant Lal Shah. And this is judgment is very recent. It is the 5th of February 2024. It is from NCLT Hyderabad. Again, the application was filed by the IRP uh, under again Rule 11 and under Section 60, Subsection 5, seeking to initiate contempt proceedings against a COC member for his willful and deliberate disobedience of the order and also invoked Section 425 of the Companies Act. The COC member, in fact, approved, uh, see, member dissented and disapproved the expenses, first of all. The members, the COC member disapproved, dissented, from the approval of expenses. Then IRP approached the adjudicating authority and adjudicating authority, in fact, ordered the member of the COC to pay the amount. Even then, the member of the COC was not paying, not paying. The decision of the NCLT was, the initiating contempt has a dual purpose. One, upholding the majesty of law by punishing the contaminer, coercing the contaminer to do what the law requires him to do, the tribunal held the member of the COC guilty of the contempt. However, in this particular case, an opportunity was given to the contaminer to come and appear before the court so that the court can decide about the quantum of the penalty. However, I could not find the subsequent order where the quantum of the penalty was decided in this case. I could not find. In case anyone has the subsequent order, so what kind of penalty was imposed in this case, Thigala Venkateshwar Rao versus Bhathant Lal Shah, it was not available online. So here the contempt was established, it was held, but an opportunity was given to the contaminer to appear before the court so that the quantum of penalty is decided. Now in another case, which is the Registrar NCLT versus Manoj Kumar Singh, IRP of Palm Developers Private Limited. This is the case in January 22. NCLT has given this case. 
So again, like the uh, Suomoto cognizance taken by the adjudicating authority, again, in this case also, when I actually see the uh, uh, NCL 80, in fact, again, uh, it was said that the respondent was found to have committed contempt of the directions issued by the adjudicating authority and was directed to appear for a hearing on punishment. The contaminer was directed to appear for a hearing on punishment and subsequent order I could not find. What kind of punishment was given to this person? That was could not find. Similarly, in the Manoj Kumar Daga versus Isjak Heavy Engineering Limited, this was the judgment of March 2020. It was again from NCLAD. I think we are short of time, Ankit, and presently to all the participants, I will have to say that I am presently attending a seminar at Eros Hotel, uh, New Delhi, and in the presence of Justice A.K. Sikri and other dignitaries, and my time of speaking there has actually started. I have to go uh, urgently to participate into my session, which was supposed to start at 12 o'clock. But then all these judgments are basically uh, the one, the N NCLT latest judgment of 21, and now the penalty that we have seen only in one cases. So we can actually say, yes, there is a power of contempt of proceedings, and those powers can be exercised by NCLT and NCLAT. Yes, Ankit. So thank you, everyone. And it was a pleasure talking, uh, having you all in this. And, and thank you for, you know, uh, much uh, increased presence for this very interesting topic today. And uh, we will wind up then and see you next week again. Thank you very much. This is our way of learning. Thank you. Thank you. All right.